T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Flight control, we have no confirmed. Climate change is a health emergency. I'm an emergency medicine physician, so my job boils down to a couple of main things. Identifying life-threatening conditions that are time-sensitive or require immediate intervention in order to prevent a negative health outcome, health emergencies. Climate change is a health emergency. My hope is by the end of this talk that you'll view climate change this way too, and you'll be motivated to advocate for urgent action to stop climate change in order to protect human health. Climate change impacts health in many, many different ways, through increasing air temperatures, worsening air quality, the increased frequency and severity of extreme weather events, as well as the spread of certain infectious diseases, water insecurity, and food insecurity. I think most people are pretty familiar with the concept of increasing air temperatures, so global warming. The average global temperature is increasing. At these high temperatures, we actually have significant effects on our own health. At very, very high temperatures, the body is unable to regulate itself. You end up getting things like heat exhaustion and heat stroke. And at persistently high temperatures, you have worsening of chronic diseases like heart disease, lung disease, even kidney disease. And these impacts are actually quite significant. In 2003, there was a heat wave in Europe, a very, very resource-rich continent that actually resulted in 70,000 premature deaths. So these are profound impacts that we're having on our health just from the increasing air temperatures. With climate change, we also see worsening air quality through a variety of mechanisms. But as we combust fossil fuel, we not only emit greenhouse gases into the air, but we also emit toxic pollutants that are extremely harmful to our health. Things that increase the concentration of ground level ozone, as well as particulate matter. When you breathe things like particulate matter into your lungs, it causes inflammation, leading to things like asthma and COPD exacerbations, as well as infections like pneumonia, and even in the long run, things like lung cancer. The World Health Organization states that air pollution is the single largest environmental cause of premature death globally. And every year, air pollution causes 7 million premature deaths. And we are doing this to ourselves. We are emitting these toxic pollutants that are causing illness and millions of deaths ev every year. We're also seeing an increasing frequency and severity of extreme weather events like hurricanes, wildfires, floods, droughts, extreme pre precipitation events like storms. And not only do these events themselves impact health through things like traumatic injury during the event, but also the aftermath of these events have significant effects on health. For instance, in 2017, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico and initially resulted in about 60 deaths. But it also damaged power infrastructure, so people were without power for months. It damaged and destroyed roads, and it damaged telephone communications. So ultimately, people were unable to access their health care facilities. They were unable to obtain medications, refrigerate medications that needed to be kept cool. And some were even unable to access emergency medical services. So months after the actual event happened, it was actually responsible for thousands of deaths. As many as 4,500 people died in the aftermath of this hurricane. And as we have increasing frequency and severity of these events, we would only expect these events to worsen in the future as well. With climate change, we're seeing a spread of certain infectious diseases due to increasing air temperatures and water temperatures. So Lyme disease, which affects your skin, your heart, and even your brain, as well as Vibrio, which can cause gastrointestinal illness and wound infections, are both moving further and further north as temperatures warm. Since the 1990s, we've had consistently increasing levels of Lyme disease, and uh, Vibrio infections have actually tripled in the last two decades as well. Our water security is threatened by climate change. With things like storms, extreme precipitation, flooding, and even drought, we have contamination of water supplies. So people are unable to access clean water for drinking, cooking, and hygiene, all of which are important for health. And food is actually impacted in multiple ways. 
Higher air temperatures lead to increased spoilage and contamination of the crops that we produce. And extreme weather events that damage roads make it harder for us to distribute the crops that we do produce. Also, higher levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere decrease the nutritional content of the crops that we produce. So higher levels of CO2 actually lead to less protein and less minerals in our crops. We would expect that as CO2 levels continue to increase, these protein levels will continue to decrease and we'll end up with malnutrition and worsening health effects due to this as well. Not surprisingly, climate change has significant effects on mental health, especially after things like extreme weather events, as well as displacement from water and food insecurity, there are significantly increasing numbers of anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And again, as climate change worsens, we would only expect this trend to worsen as well. These are just a handful of the many, many ways that climate change directly impacts individuals' human health. Ultimately, it causes illness and death. It's a life-threatening condition. And we treat it by decreasing our levels of emissions in order to limit planetary warming. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change states that we need to limit our warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels by the end of this century. The way that we do that is by decreasing our carbon emissions by 45% of 2010 levels by the year 2030. And we need to reach net zero emissions by 2050. This is an incredibly daunting task, but the longer we wait to decrease the emissions, the harder it will be to reach this goal. Because once greenhouse gases are emitted into the atmosphere, they have long lasting warming effects. The sooner we're able to decrease these emissions, the better chance we have at limiting our warming. So climate change is a life-threatening condition that requires immediate intervention to prevent negative health outcomes. Climate change is a health emergency. So what can we do about it? Well, action needs to be taken on the individual, regional, state, national, and international level in order for us to decrease these emissions. On an individual level, you can do things like adopt a plant-based diet or even just decrease the amount of red meat and dairy in your diet because livestock and agriculture contribute so significantly to our greenhouse gas emissions. You can also actively commute to work, so walking or biking instead of driving a car. And if you do have to drive, then consider combining your trips in order to minimize the amount of fossil fuel that you burn. You can use energy efficient appliances in your home and try to focus on decreasing the amount of waste that you produce. And while your personal contribution is extremely important, this is a systemic problem and we need systemic change. Since 1988, only 100 companies account for over 70% of our greenhouse gas emissions. This is a systemic problem that needs systemic change. We need to move towards a zero carbon economy by increasing the amount of renewable energy we use, increasing our energy efficiency and energy storage, and most importantly, decreasing our greenhouse gas emissions like carbon dioxide and methane. We have the tools to do this. They exist. The solutions are out there but we need policies to be in place for us to be able to implement these solutions. That's why the most important thing you can do is elect policymakers that view climate change as the primary issue. If you find that your policymaker does not view climate change as the primary issue, then consider becoming a policymaker yourself because we need to act now. Climate change is a health emergency and we have no more time to waste. Thank you.